Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mac Whisperer Academy. I'm Dylan Stewart, the Mac Whisperer, and in today's session, you're gonna learn everything you ever needed to know about the dock. That's that bar that runs across the bottom of your computer screen. It's used for applications, folders, and docs, but wait till you see everything else you can do with it. The dock is one of the most important applications on a Macintosh computer. It's completely overlooked and completely underutilized by almost everybody. But after this session today, you're going to know how to get so much more out of it and use the dock to help you get more things done in less time with less effort than you thought possible. The first question is, what is the dock and why should I use it? It's very simple. The dock is a bar that is meant to store your frequently used folders, documents, and applications and make it easy for you to get into or out of those folders, those documents, and those applications. The first thing to understanding how to use the dock is understanding about the three separate parts of the dock. The first part of the dock, which is to the left side of that horizontal line, everything to the left of that is applications. In between the two horizontal lines is a section called recent applications. And then to the far right side of the dock is a section for folders, and documents. So if you see these three separate sections, we're gonna talk about each of them in order. First, let's talk about the applications. It's super helpful to have the applications that you use all the time one click away. So if you're in a specific application all the time, it really should be down in the dock. But there's a problem. You see, I consider the dock to be prime real estate on your computer. It's always there, it's always available, and I don't want it cluttered up with things I'm not using regularly. It's up to you to clean the dock out, to make sure that the only applications there are ones that you use all the time. To remove something, put your cursor down on it, click on it, and quickly drag it up. And as soon as you move that application a little bit above the dock, you'll notice that it goes translucent and gives you the option to remove it by simply letting go of the mouse like this poof, and that's gone. So one of the things you want to do is go through all of those applications you're not using and get rid of them. One of the other things that you can do with the application side of the dock is quickly see what programs are running and using up your resources and easily quit them. If you look across the dock, you're going to notice certain things have a little black dot underneath them. That indicator is going to show you that that application is currently running. Take a look right now what things are running on your computer. Are you aware they're running? Did you think that you quit those programs? It's really, really common that there are a ton of things that are open that you don't realize. So take a moment, look at your dock, find any of those indicators that you don't need, right click and quit them. Now there is one other really cool thing that you can do with the application side of the dock. And here's how it works. I'm gonna open up a Safari window and I'm gonna point that Safari window to a particular couple of pages here. Let's open one to Mac Rumors and then I'm going to go into the file menu and open a new window and I'm going to open a second window to Gizmodo and I'm going to open a third window to TechCrunch and to navigate between them I'm going to go down to the dock and I'm going to right click on Safari and what I want you to notice is right up at the top there it shows all three windows. So rather than minimizing stuff and moving it out of the way, all I have to do is right click on Safari and I can go from one window to the next window to the next window without any problems or headaches or issues. So I'm going to go ahead and quit Safari now. Come up here, click quit, and I'm going to turn our attention to the middle of the dock. In the middle of the dock, you're going to see the recently used application section. It's there so that when you open up an application, it has a place to go so you can get back to it quickly. And if you quit one of those applications, it'll stay in that section so that you can easily return to it. Every application that you open on your computer will show up somewhere on the dock. If it lives there, It'll show up on the left side of the dock with a little dot underneath it. But if it's a visitor, it's going to show up on the right side in the recent application section. Let's go ahead and let's open up chess. It's not currently on my dock. As I double click to open it up, notice that it shows up on the recent application section towards the bottom right side. When I quit it, it closes the application, but it stays 
in that recent application section. But now I'm gonna open something else up. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a program called Gemini. And notice that opened on the recent items of the doc, but where'd chess go? You see, the recent items only stores up to three apps that aren't running. It'll store more if they're running, but as you quit them, they're going to disappear. If that's an application that you're going to use frequently, rather than leaving it in the recent application section, you can take it and drag it right over to the main part of the dock and it will stay there permanently. You can also very easily add something from the recent items on the dock directly to the dock itself by right clicking, going to options and telling it to stay in the dock. When you do this, it'll move it out of the recent items and over to the left side, just like this. So now we can talk about the far right side. The far right side is called the folders and documents section, and it may even be more useful than the application side. The way it works is like this. You can take any folder or any document in your computer and add it there. I'm gonna take my applications folder and I'm going to drag it to the far right side. Now I want you to notice when you drag something onto the dock, it'll make room for it. See how it kind of moves around? So let's leave the applications folder there. When you first put a folder onto the dock, it's going to look like an image of all of the contents of that folder. This is what's called a stack. By right-clicking on a stack, you get some options. You get to choose how to sort the stack. I like to leave it by name. You get to choose whether it's displayed as a folder or as a stack. In this case, I'm gonna change it to display as a folder like this. And then you can also choose how the content is going to be viewed. And there are three basic views. The first one is called the fan view. And this is what the fan view looks like. It pops up, you get about nine items. They're in alphabetical order, so you only really see the A's. If you've got a really big folder, this is not a good way to view the contents on the dock because it just doesn't show you enough. And up at the top, it shows this arrow that says 206 more in the finder, which will then go ahead and open the entire folder up. I don't like it. Let's right click again. Now let's talk about grid. Grid is a little bit better because when you click on grid, it opens up a grid of all the items in that folder. But my problem with the grid is these are really big pictures. And again, I still have a lot of applications in this folder. Now maybe the folder you're putting on the dock isn't an applications folder and there's only a handful of things in it. And maybe you want those things to be visual, big pictures. Then the grid is perfect for you because you can easily scroll through any of these items but it doesn't work for me and it really doesn't work for the applications folder. So I'm gonna right click again and this time I'm gonna to go to our third option, the list. And in the list view, what happens is when you click on a folder, it shows you everything in the folder. And it's alphabetical and it scrolls easily and it's easy to find anything you want. In addition to being easy to find anything you want, it also allows you to easily navigate into subfolders. Now, that's how you put folders on the right side of your dock. To put a document there is just as simple. I'm gonna open up Dropbox, and I'm gonna go into my personal folder here, and inside here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this document called Clean Sweep. I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna drag it right down to the dock, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop this guy right here, and now it's there. What's amazing about this is every time I need to access it, all I have to do is click on it. It will go ahead and it will open up Microsoft Word for me and open up this particular document just like that. The last thing I wanna say about all of this is that whatever you put on the dock is not really there. It's creating a shortcut or an alias to that. So if I remove this clean sweep document from the dock by lifting it up and letting it go, it didn't remove that from my finder. It's still right here and I can drag it right back down. Anything that you put onto the dock, it's just a shortcut or an alias, which means that you can easily remove those items and clean up your dock without worrying that you're losing something. When you clean up the application side of your dock, because you now have the application folder on the right side, you can get to any program you need to, whether it's on the dock or not. So a lot of people leave things on the dock because they don't know where they would find them otherwise. They may not be using them, but they're afraid of losing them. Don't be afraid of losing them. Put your application folder on the right side, and then anything that's not actively being used, just pull it off. Remove it. It doesn't need to live there cluttering up your life 24-7. You see, 
That's the key component of the doc. It's there to help you quickly get into and get out of folders and documents. It's there to help you open and quit applications. It's there so that you know which applications are running and so that you can quit them. It's there so that you can easily navigate through multiple windows within a particular document or application. It's there so that you can navigate through multiple windows inside of a particular application. It's a powerhouse of tools. It's not just there for you to click on those applications first thing in the day. Which brings me to my last and possibly most important point. One of the things that frustrates me a lot when I see other people doing it is that they love to minimize windows because it's hard for them to navigate through all of the windows they've got in front of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a couple of windows here. Let's get a calendar open here. Let's get reminders open here. Let's get mail open here. And now that everything's nicely cluttered and confusing, let's start minimizing things because everybody seems to love to do that. I'm gonna minimize mail. I'm gonna minimize reminders. I'm gonna minimize the calendar. I'm gonna minimize the finder. I'm gonna minimize Microsoft Word. Now when I wanna go do something, I have to go down to the dock down here where all of these minimized windows are. And I have to look, is that the right mailbox? Is that, oh, there's reminders, okay, all right. There's Busy Cal, okay, there's documents, got it. And if you do use something like Mission Control, which allows you to see all of your open windows, you're gonna find anything minimized doesn't show up. So how do I deal with windows? Well, first, let's open these windows back up. The way I deal with having multiple windows on my computer without hiding them, minimizing, or moving them out of the way is by using the dock. You see, whatever application you click on on the dock is going to bring that window forward. So if I need to get into my calendar, I click right here. There's my calendar. Done. I don't have to go hunting for it in the minimize section. I don't have to move things around to figure out where it is. Well, now I'd like to get to reminders. Oh, there, I'm done. I'm done. It's so simple. There is no step two. Well, now let's get to mail. Okay, there's mail. By not minimizing your windows, you're actually making it easier for you to get back to that program without moving things around and minimizing things and hiding things simply by going to the dock, finding what you're looking for, and clicking on it. And then it's open. That's how I love using the dock. It's why I don't minimize windows or move things out of the way almost at all, because by using the dock, I can so quickly pull whatever I want up front without having to find it, search for it, or hunt it down. So that's our lesson. I hope you got some amazing value out of how to use the dock better and more efficiently. If you liked this video and what you learned here, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, go ahead and do that now because we put out new tips, tricks, and tutorials every week. And make sure to hit the notify bell so that you get notified when I release my new videos and you don't miss anything. I'm Dylan Stewart. I'm the Mac Whisperer, and I will see you next time.